In this episode, I'll try to explain the working of Ji and Zheng, core concepts in the art of war that are used to explain the relationship between defense and offense, and the need to tip the balance of power in your favor if you want to secure an undefeatable position. In Chinese, Zheng refers to something that's fundamental, while Ji means something odd or extraordinary. Sun Zi believed that to be successful in war, there needs to be a balance between these two. To illustrate Ji and Zheng, I'll combine Chapter Four and Five of the Art of War. One deals with the issue of balance of power, while the other explains the idea of a winning momentum. Together, they form a relationship of Ji and Zheng. Sun Zi believed that achieving a victory that everybody else sees as a victory is not the most impressive feat, and the best strategists often succeed in ways that aren't always obvious. The officials of Qi, from our story in episode five, provide an example. They defeated their enemy through statecraft at a banquet and prevented war from breaking out. Their efforts would have gone unnoticed if not for the record of the court historian. The best strategists, according to Sun Tzu, aren't the ones rushing to place their troops in perilous conditions to fight against tremendous odds. These triumphs might bring fame, but they inevitably entail great risk. Instead, commanders must position their troops in a strong defensible position while being poised to strike whenever the enemy reveals their weakness. The side that takes up arms only when they have the upper hand is more likely to win, while the side that charges into a war in search of victory is more likely to fail. Victory or defeat is a matter of getting on the right side of the balance of power. According to Sun Tzu's formula, the balance of power depends on the size of one's territory, population, and resources. A state that makes the best use of its land, either by expanding its size or improving its productivity, can support a larger population. And a larger population means more soldiers can be drafted for military service, and more resources produced to support military operations. Ultimately, a small advantage in territory, population, or resources often leads to the balance of power being tilted in your favor. So the Zheng, the fundamentals of war, have nothing to do with war per se. Instead, it's about governance. A topic we covered in our episode about making a pre-war assessment. Sun Tzu said, "The true masters of military command build up their defenses by implementing rules and regulations that benefit society. In doing so, a state can encourage people to settle down, cultivate more land, promote productivity and prosperity in agriculture and commerce, and motivate its soldiers to fight bravely in support of their homeland." A solid defense is easy to arrange because it depends on one's own initiative. A sizable territory, a robust economy, and a galvanized population contribute to an undefeatable position. The winning strike, however, is not easy to plan because the timing is reliant on when the enemy makes a mistake and provides an opportunity. If the opposing side is a good defender and never provides an opening. Then a lot more effort is required to build up the momentum for a win. This is where G flexible tactics comes in. Sun Tzu believed there is great power in momentum. Just like enough flowing water can wash away heavy stones, an army with enough momentum can carve their way through a defensive line. But this only works when the commander can make good use of his resources to build up their momentum. And that means the practice of Ji. Using Ji and Zheng in military management means having both a main force to engage the enemy and a special force to look for the weak points on the flanks. In most cases, you can think of the main force as the Zheng and the special force as the Ji. But depending on how the battle plays out, the special force can assume the role of the main force, and vice versa. Making dynamism the key to coping with uncertainty on the battlefield. I'll use an example to explain how this Ji and Zheng dynamic can work. 
Near the end of the third century BCE, the troops of the state of Qin and the state of Zhao were locked in a stalemate. The Zhao commander Lian Po lost a few battles, so he decided to take a tough defensive position. The state of Qin, seeking to break the great lock, spread rumors in the court of Zhao that Lian Po's strategy was failing, which led to his replacement by the young and fledgling commander named Zhao Kuo. In the first battles up against this young new commander, the Qing generals hit two groups of special forces on the sidelines. Their main force feigned defeat and retreated to camp, chased by the Zhao troops. The Qing special forces then attacked from the rear and the flank, cutting the Zhao forces in half and severing their supply line. This would become one of the deadliest campaigns of the Warring State period, the bloody period of history that followed the Spring and Autumn period. In this battle, the state of Qing made two extraordinary moves in accordance with the principle of Ji. Instead of trying to battle their way through the Zhao front lines, they first launched a propaganda campaign to deceive their opponents into going on the defensive. The Qing generals then used special forces to encircle the Zhao and sealed the victory. If the Zhao commander had special forces of his own, he might not have been cornered in the surprise attack. The Qing generals practiced the idea of Ji by dispatching special forces on the side, just as they were when they convinced their enemy to replace its experienced battle-hardened commander. In this example, we've seen two different applications of Ji, but according to Sun Tzu, so long as the fundamental defense is secured, the applications of Ji are endless. Sun Tzu said, there are only five major tones in traditional Chinese music, but a skillful musician can create an endless list of melodies. There are only five major flavors in food, but a master chef can cook an endless list of delicacies. Ji and Zheng are merely two factors of war, but the best strategists can come up with endless ways to win a war. All they ever need is to consolidate their defense and think outside the box. Of course, Sun Tzu also offered other suggestions, such as to divide the army into smaller units and put competent people in charge, and to assign the right general for the right mission. This is hardly novel advice. It's what military commanders everywhere have been doing throughout the history. What is novel, however, is his teachings on how to use flexibility combined with a good dug-in defense to your advantage. In our next episode, we'll look at a more elaborate interpretation of flexible tactics.